Hi, I'm Dr. Ty Vincent. Uh, I was going to do a video just tell you a little bit about myself. People seem interested in that. Um, you should know who it is you're getting advice from and who you're listening to and maybe why. Uh, I was born in Anchorage, Alaska, in a really bad part of town in a trailer and moved out to a suburb in a small town called Wasilla when I was two years old, like 2,500 people, grew up kind of in the woods in rural Alaska. Not a lot of people, not a big city. Um, I was an unusual kid at the time. I probably had Asperger's syndrome as a kid, um, which wasn't really well known then in the 70s. I was born in 1973. I would do jigsaw puzzles upside down with the cardboard side up. Um, I was reading at a college level by the time I was seven. I was definitely an odd kid. I was in the gifted program and they tested my IQ every few years and it was always like 145, 146. And nobody really knew what to do with me. I was really interested in science. I just really loved science and also mythology and all those things. And all the way through school up until high school and even halfway through college, I was pretty sure I wanted to be a marine biologist. I just really liked science, wanted to be into science. For various personal reasons, I ended up going to school in places that didn't have marine science programs. Um, like I followed my first girlfriend to different places and so then I had to change my plans and my major. And all I thought was, well, I guess I'll get a biology degree and maybe I'll go to medical school. That was really the extent of it. So I wasn't one of these kids who always wanted to be a doctor, who thought the title meant something or the prestige or the money or the authority or any of that. I got into medicine because I like science and I wanted to solve problems. What I really get excited about is solving problems. And in medicine, people come in with problems and that's my job and I focus on that and I focus on it very analytically and not very emotionally. And one of the things I'm supposed to tell you is that I don't really get emotional or judge people about their things, so you don't have to have any nervousness about that. I will probably communicate with you in a very, very uh, blunt and frank way, <laughs> and very nonchalant way. I don't really get upset about things. I, don't, I may seem annoyed in my emails or something, um, but I'm not. <laughs> it's just my way of communicating. I try to be as unambiguous as possible so that um, everything's clear and there's no confusion or misunderstanding, which is very common in human communication. So those are some aspects of me. How I got to do LDI was as I went into medical school, I was under the false impression that they were gonna teach me how to fix problems that people had and how to understand what was wrong with them and how to promote normal health. So I thought I was supposed to learn all about how the body worked, how nutrition was important. I was reading nutritional biochemistry textbooks and things like that before medical school trying to prepare. And then I discovered that they didn't teach you any of that stuff. They taught us a lot of dense basic science and systems biology, which I really liked. I delved into that really deep. I probably know, I remember more biology and minutia about how the body works and things than most doctors you would talk to because I really embraced that stuff. I scored in the top 1% in the country on every step of the US medical licensing exam, the in-training exam we took all three years of residency, my family practice board exam I scored in the 99th percentile and all those things. So I learned everything conventional medicine wanted me to learn. I went to the University of Washington, uh, the number one medical school in the country. So by all estimates when I got out, I should have been a really good doctor. I should have been able to help people a lot. But what I found was that I wasn't really helping people, even though I was doing everything right, doing everything by the standard of care in medicine, right? So what I found was that conventional medicine is really narrow-minded. It's really based on pharmaceuticals and managing symptoms with drugs, and that doesn't make people healthy, and it doesn't address the cause of illness. So I had to figure out how to fill those gaps in my knowledge and so I set out to learn Chinese medicine and acupuncture my third year of residency. I was chief resident, I had three kids, and I took the extra time to learn Chinese medicine and acupuncture during my third year of residency. And then I, I discovered functional medicine, I read the whole functional medicine textbook. I learned bioidentical hormone therapy, I learned chelation therapy and other methods of detoxification, intravenous uh, nutrition therapy, orthomolecular medicine. I became a Reiki master because I understood that Energy medicine is a very real thing. I read textbooks on energy medicine and how that works. I didn't come to the ener energy medicine world from kind of the woo-woo counterculture side of things. I came to it from a position of quantum physics and actual science and said, oh, this is real. And then I learned to like work with energy based on a, that perspective, which is different from most people. Um, as I worked with more and more sick people with chronic illnesses and I learned all these new tools, I got better and better at solving problems that people had and I found that a lot of people had hormonal problems. I could fix a lot of things with that. Toxicity, all those different things. I wrote a, a book in 2012, it was published called Thinking Outside the Pillbox, 
which is 800 pages long, which is doesn't doesn't surprise people who know me because I talk a lot, um, so I write a lot too. But there's a lot of information there about all this, and it was really before I got into LDI that I wrote that book, and it was still that thick and dense, just so much to know, and so many things that I've learned that can help people figure out their problems. But at that point, I was still running into a wall with a lot of people who had chronic illness issues, and none of my other tools worked. What I eventually realized was that a lot of these people have chronic immunological problems, chronic inflammation of one cause or another. So then I had to find ways to fix that. And I learned sublingual immunotherapy. I learned provocation neutralization therapy. And then I learned LDA, low dose allergy therapy. And that was really effective and I was really surprised. And I still don't know how it works, but I had to just let that go and move on. And what I found was a lot of these people that had chronic problems that I couldn't solve with all my other methodologies, I could fix it if I could establish immune tolerance for whatever they were reacting to. And so I took LDA in 2008, I learned that, and it was isolated to treating certain allergies, chemicals, foods, and environmental allergies, and a couple of bacterial antigens that would treat specific autoimmune conditions, like rheumatoid arthritis, for example. But there were only a couple. And I thought, well, there are so many other chronic problems people have that seem to have an immunological component and a reaction to something. So from 2009 on, I have set about trying to solve a lot of these problems that were previously unsolved and identifying which antigens correspond to which illnesses. And I've been able to determine a lot of them myself that were previously unknown. Like sarcoidosis, we can fix with mycobacteria. Psoriasis responds to a collection of skin fungi. We can fix osteoarthritis using a, a collection of collagen molecules. We can fix cold sores and general herpes by using HSV. We can treat acne by using a mixture of skin bacteria. There's a huge list. And over the years, we now have this big armamentarium of antigens, and I can solve so many problems with this. It's actually extremely fun. It's very intellectually stimulating. It's exciting. When I get somebody with a new problem I've never treated before, I get actually really excited about that. Um, and if I can fix it when no one else has been able to fix it before, that's a big ego boost. It makes you feel really good. And we're helping people in the process, and I just, just love what I do. And that's, that's how I got here.